Planning Board is called to order. I'm Jean McKnight, Planning Board Chair, and this open meeting of the Needham Planning Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with current state regulations, and is being recorded. Public access to this meeting does not ensure that there will be public participation unless required by law. This meeting will not have public comment. First, we'll confirm that a quorum of the members of the planning board are present. When I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Um, Martin Jacobs. Present. Adam Block. Present. Paul Alpert. Present. Ted Owens. Present. Um, so we have a quorum, all members are present. Um, next, I'll introduce planning department and um, I don't think we have any yeah. other town staff. Uh, so the planning, the, the staff from the planning department who's with us at this meeting is our planning director, Lee Newman. Yes, I'm present. And um, our first agenda item um, is um, a presentation and discussion of the Highway Commercial One rezoning and planning study. So with us for, the, for that, our, um, the uh, principal of architect of Studio in A, Natasha Espada. Hello. And from also Studio in A architects, Susan Crow Knight. Hello. All right. So, um, Lee, did, um, oh, let me add. Uh, one more thing here. Um, uh, please, for those, oh, I should just say, we all know this already, it's just us, uh, but um, be aware that others may be able to see and hear you and anything you share with state will be a matter of public record. I also wanna to mention to any of the public that is tuning in that all supporting materials for this meeting, including the agenda, um, and the uh, PowerPoint presentation we're going to see are available on the town's website, www.needhammass.gov. Um, and each of the speakers will be introduced um, as I essentially just did. Um, and after speakers conclude their remarks, each board member will be asked by name for any common questions or motions. Um, if we take any votes, they will be by roll call. Um, and I think our planning director, uh, Lee Newman, had a few, has a few introductory remarks. Uh, yes, I just want to um, introduce the work that uh, Natasha and her team have been doing for us. Um, and, I'll, and I'll be very brief because I know there are some members that have a limited time this morning for a meeting. Um, but essentially, this is a follow up um, to the zoning proposal that was presented to the town um, in October of 2019. Um, where we looked at rezoning the Muzzy and Channel 5 site um, to encourage redevelopment um, on a scale that was more compatible with the market and our visions for the property moving forward. Um, and there were a number of issues and concerns that were raised at that town meeting when their proposal was initially presented. Um, and the planning board went back to the community um, in January of 2020. Uh, with a community meeting to try to get some input um, and, and direction on what were the kinds of changes that the town should, and planning board should be looking at um, to come up with a proposal that would receive community report, uh, support. So as part of that, we looked at um, uh, reducing the uh, floor um, area ratio on the property. Um, we looked at um, uh, introducing housing as a potential um, reuse on the site. Um, and we looked at some adjustments um, that might be appropriately made to height in terms of its proximity to Highland Avenue and Gould Street. Um, so, so Natasha basically was, was charged with um, looking at those changes in what the original proposal had um, comprised and actually representing them so people could better understand their visual impact um, on the property. And so I'm gonna let her walk you through um, I think the existing site context um, you know, and basically what a presentation would look like to, the, to a community meeting on February 3rd, which incorporates those changes which the, we understand the community wanted to see 
um, in this redevelopment scheme for this property. All right, and one thing I forgot I'll do now before Natasha starts. Um, I'd like a, a motion to continue this meeting if we should encounter technical difficulties that make it impossible to continue um, in this time frame we are in. Um, and the, the motion would be to continue the meeting uh, to January 19th at 7.15 p.m. And also a motion uh, for this meeting that we're in right now to have the vice chair act as chair if the chair should have technical difficulties. So um, moved. Okay, second. so we have that motion. May I have a second? Marty seconded. Oh, I did. Oh, okay, didn't hear. Um, so uh, I'll do the roll call on this. Um, Martin Jacobs. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. Paul Alpert. Aye. Ted Owens. Aye. And the chair is aye. All right, good. Uh, the floor is yours now, um, Natasha Espada, for the presentation. Thank you. Jean, one quick question is, um, how much time do we have for the presentation, just to make sure that I don't, you know, that we can um, make sure we get through all of it within your allotted time and that we have time for questions? Well, Ted Owens, uh, and there may be others too, um, but Ted particularly needs to leave promptly at 9.30. Okay, so... so Let's try to do this in 15 to 20 minutes max. And then, so we can have a lot of time. We can go back to some of the pieces. Okay. Um, so thank you all for, for having us again. We, we've, we've gone back and looked at the, at the information from the traffic report as, as Lee mentioned. Um, and, and we've been looking at the project uh, with a different lens of density and use group. So again, this is the site. Can you see my cursor? This yes. is the site and it's divided into site one and site two. Site one, uh, you know, one being the Muzzy Ford and one being the, um, the Channel 5 site. And so um, the agenda for today is just an introduction and overview of the planning effort to date. Um, we're going to give you a summary of the existing conditions, review the proposed zoning changes, um, examination of traffic impacts and recommended improvements, and then um, the presentation of estimated fiscal impacts and the question and comment period. So this is kind of the agenda for what it will be for the community meeting. I'm not sure, Lee, if we're, and um, Adam, if, we're, if you're gonna talk about the fiscal impacts and um, at the, to today, but I just- No, we're not. To... I think this, this meeting is really just gonna be focused around the, the, the your, press, your, your, your component, which was the urban design piece. Okay, perfect. But that's the agenda for the, for the workshop. Okay. The community meeting, excuse me. Okay, so um, what, we, what we, just to give you just a big quick synopsis, because you're gonna see a lot of drawings just to kind of uh, make it into a summary here is we're gonna review the existing zoning, which has an FAR of 0.5. We've specifically been asked to look at a warehouse on the site, which is a commercial use. Um, we are also gonna look at as of right zoning that has been, um, is now 1.0 FAR. And we're gonna look at two options for that. We're gonna look at a program for commercial use and we're look at, gonna look at a program for mixed use, commercial and residential. Um, and then we're gonna look at the special permit zoning with an FAR of 1.35. Again, two options, an option with commercial use and an option with mixed use, commercial and residential. All of the numbers that we were getting based on the proportion of mixed use is correlated to the work that was done with the traffic study. So one of the things that, that we did was we analyzed NEDM, um, an overall um, analysis of NEDM. Again, this is a satellite view of the town. And then we looked at density in the town. And one of the things that struck us is that this is the red is the site. There's a commercial district, of course, um, to the north of it, but then also the corridor coming all the way from Needham Street across the highway down into the center of Needham and down through, towards Chestnut Street is a pretty strong um, corridor of amenities and of density. And so across the highway, you can also see kind of, you know, all the housing that supports it behind it. And across, um, across the highway, you see the density of the industrial park that actually um, has buildings that are of a larger size. We also looked at, again, the amenities and this amenities corridor, how it actually impacts you know, uh, Highland Avenue as it goes into Chapel and into Chestnut Street. And then we looked also at transportation. And one of the things that we would probably suggest is a review of 
The site is in an area with no public transit at this moment, even though it's a main corridor. Um, so maybe the, the blue, the purple is the train stations and the blue is the bus route. Maybe there's a way of um, looking at how the transportation and how it can impact the site in a, in a better way. And the other thing we looked at were historic sites on the town and in and, and, and adjacent towns. And what we noticed was that there really is no, really are no historic sites in this vicinity where the site takes place. And so that gives an opportunity for whatever happens in that site um, to, to have a, you know, to, to be able to look at it in a, in a more open way. So one of the things that we did is we looked at the civic and commercial corridor of again, starting down here in Chestnut Street as you're going through all the way up to the center of town and then again, from the center of town all the way through towards Needham Heights. And so that you can kind of see that most of the buildings are two, um, there's some three-story buildings, um, larger civic buildings. Most of them are creating an edge on that street. So that density creates an edge that, that um, and, it's, and it's intertwined with some houses and all of that, but um, there's a precedent for having that corridor continue into the site. And so let's, we just wanted to go through the zoning comparison, the existing bylaw, the previous proposal and the new proposal. For the FAR, we had an existing bylaw and as of right of 0.5, um, or we have a special permit of 0.65 to 0.75. The previous proposal had a by right of one, so that would, that would double it, and the special permit of 1.75. And the new proposal is keeping the one for the by right and special permit of 1.35. So that has decreased. Uh, for the height, the by right is 30 feet. The previous proposal has by right of 70 feet and special permit of 70 feet. And the new proposal will remain, except that the setbacks for certain areas will have, um, instead of uh, the 54 feet closer to the street, we have 42. Uh, the front setback right now is 20 feet, 50 feet on Goulden Highland. And the, uh, the, new, the previous proposal had 20 feet on Goulden Highland and special permit. And the new proposal is 20 feet for both. Uh, the side setback is 20 feet and that remains for the previous proposal and the new proposal. The rear setback was 10 feet by right in the existing by, is, is that way in the existing bylaw. Previous proposal was 20 and 20. The new proposal is 10 and 10, going back to where we are right now. Um, the minimum lot area remains at 20,000 square feet. The minimum lot frontage is 100 feet and all of that remains. The maximum lot coverage, currently there's no requirement. So you could fill up the whole site if you can find the, a way to do the parking. Um, previous proposal was 65% and the new proposal will continue to be 65%. And then the traffic mitigation is uh, proposed to right now, paid by the developer, the same thing would happen with the previous and the new proposal. And so the, um, these are the uses, I'm sure you're familiar with what the uses are. The one use that would be added to it, and Lee, correct me if I'm wrong, is the residential multifamily use of up to 240 units. That's correct. Are we really changing the uses? Um, Aren't these old uses um, being changed to conform to what's across the highway? At the, 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 yes, what's not represented on this table and it does need to be updated is what the use profile looks like under the exists under the proposed zoning. It's not represented on this chart yet for right. the proposed zoning that needs to be added in. Right. And then the only change from the original proposal would be the addition of housing um, by special permit. And, and what um, we should do is probably say which uses are not going to be, you know, from the original. Are um, not going to carry forward. We probably, are not going to carry forward. I think we probably need, we'll, we'll need a separate slide that more specifically talks to the use profile. Maybe we should have a slide on the dimensional. I'll work with you on that. We have and a then lot a, of slide, a slide on the uses so that it's clear what the changes are. Yeah. And okay. um, if I may comment, um, um, Natasha, you mentioned the 42 foot height uh, at the corner. It's um, not here. But it's not on the chart and it's very important. So Correct. We, need, we need that on the chart. Correct. So I'll work with Lee and Adam 
um, we're working with us on this and we'll we'll make sure that we're all on the same page on it. But I, 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 I didn't see it here. So I mentioned, you know, so I wanted to make sure that that was something that I think is important. There are a lot of qualifying footnotes um, to, to exceptions to the setback rules. Um, so that's gonna have to be done through a series of probably of footnotes. Um, we'll work on that. So it's ready for the presentation for the community. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the existing zoning. So now that you've seen the photos of kind of that corridor, this is the corridor when it gets to this area, it kind of disintegrates. There's some um, really nice houses on the right, there's Wingate on the left that uh, is obscured by trees, but not in the winter as much. But basically, it, you know, it, it becomes a parking lot on one side and a fence on the other. Um, and then this is go looking Gould Street towards the traffic light at, at Highland and Gould. Um, again, there's a nice edge of housing on the right hand side, right now a parking lot on the left. Um, and then this is a view looking towards Needham from as you're crossing over the bridge and this is right now the view of the gateway to Needham. And this is a view from the exit highway 19B. Marianne had requested this view. I think it's an important view. We haven't been able to do some renderings of these yet because we, we had all the other renderings from the other streets to look at, but this is something that Lee and I are talking that we, we will um, look at doing some renderings of this view as well. So, one of the things that um, we did was we, from the last presentation is that we pulled back a little bit so that you can see um, not only the commercial district on the other side of the highway and the proportion of those buildings, but also the proportion of the buildings with relationship to not only um, this industrial um, area next to the site, but also the street corridors you go up that there are some buildings that are larger and that are commercial. And then there's also um, the Temple Beth Shalom. So, and then and there's the location of the new fire station. So there are some larger buildings on this corridor. Um, uh, and so what we wanted to do was show the proportion of the current buildings that are on the site, Channel 5 and the Muzzy Ford buildings to give a context. And then the housing across the way and the proportion of that to the site. And so right now there, um, and we need to revise this a little bit. We got some more information from Lee yesterday on one more property line here. But there's, there are two sites. There's the site of, of Channel 5, and then there's the site here of Mussey Ford. And um, approximately it's 440, 454 square feet for the Muzzy Ford site and about 205,000 square feet for the Channel 5. Um, right now there's 343 parking spaces required for the site for Channel 5 and 757 um, for Muzzy Ford, the site. I have a quick question. Mm -hmm. um, in between site one and site two, there is um, uh, there's a, a piece of land. Does that uh, is that part of the area that we're rezoning? I thought it was. Is that the building? Um, the, uh, uh, I think the Connecticut School of TV or something. This right here. Yes. Exactly. So that is part of. There's a there's a property line that's right here at the edge of it. And that is part of the Channel 5 site. We thought that this was part, we, we were, based on talking to Deborah when we were first working on it, we thought that this lot was part of site two. Right. But it's not. So um, our, our analysis is still all relevant because it, you know, right. we're looking at it as two sites. Um, but that is something that this piece of the site is part of site one. So we will, for, for the meeting, we will revise that. We just learned this late yesterday. Um, Natasha, did, did you did, did you say that between sites one and site two currently there's over a thousand parking spaces required? Yes, three hundred and forty three um, for site one and seven fifty seven for site two. Can you show that on that table that we saw? Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So maybe we just add a whole parking. A, park, a line on parking, right? Yeah. The thing is that all of the parking, and we can do it as a footnote, Lee, is 300 square feet um, per one space, or one space for 300 square feet, except for the warehouse, which is one for 800. So we would can show that as a footnote as well. But it's one to 300, which is something, you know, that we need to, um, that, that is also, you know, to discuss. Um, I think, on the Muzzy site, you know, a portion of the parking is, is the requirement for the building. And then the other 
portion of that parking is just basically to park cars that are for sale. So and, you should probably look at is, how, how, how that's represented too, so it's clear. Yeah, I think I think it should be separated. To separate the two for right mm -hmm. now to show? Okay. The one, because it appears now as if everything is based on the square footage. Um, well, this is this is also parking that's maximum parking. If you don't if you don't fulfill the 0.5, you don't have to do that amount of parking. So it all depends on you know that's maximum parking. So maybe oh, we. I see. I was talking about if someone were oh, to I develop something by right, these are the parking requirements that they're obligated to. It's Correct. not a reflection of the present parking situation at Muzzy or Channel Five or that. Okay. Uh, I was confused. Yeah, that's not clear because we're talking about the existing site plan and existing assuming, uses. It's so it's we assuming could, a building of 0.5 FAR divided by 300 square feet per space. Right. So this is maximum. If you were to max the FAR on both sites, that is the requirement for parking. That is not the current requirement because the FAR is not max, maximized. So, but it would probably be good to, to be able to document what is existing. Okay. So one of the things that we looked at is a, um, for both of them is what would happen if you were to put a one story um, warehouse and, and how many spaces would we need? And we figured that we could probably get, uh, we could meet it by 0.35 and it's a one story building that is 0.35 FAR with, um, uh, I think it's about 140 spaces. Is that true, Susan? Yes. And so, um, and that's because it's 800 square foot per space. And so that's what it would look like. So one of the things that you can do right now is to have a building of this size within, within the as of right. And as you can see, it actually exceeds the size of some of the buildings across the highway. And so, the proportion of the building compared to the building surrounding it and to the community surround it is fairly large. Um, Natasha, I noticed uh, for the, for the uh, I looked through this yesterday and noticed this, but I wanna mention it now because I see it for the first time. Um, next to the proposed warehouse uh, or is this black building or something? Yeah. I Susan, and that appears on, every, on many of the slides and there's no, no, no explanation of what it is. Susan, do I, you know what that is? I, I think that's the Muzzy Ford building. I think it's an, an overlay of the existing condition. So we could, we could, um, we, we could Photoshop it out. And, and Yeah, I think so yeah. because it's obviously not going to be there. No, anymore. you're right. Yeah, and, I think uh, for these existing conditions, we, we basically um, showed, kept what was there underneath, but we can remove that. I think it, it, it shows even on some of the later slides that are showing. Um, we don't okay. Think I think you might want to show with and without it, because it does give a contrast, shows your contrast of how much bigger this warehouse would or could be than the existing building. So I, I would show it both ways. There's actually two buildings though. Yes, I there think. Are. Well, we're it's on top of the other building. Exactly, but it's uh, so I um, I see the point. One thought that that uh, you know a smaller working group on this is thinking about is whether or not to include the warehouse itself as part of the main deck, as Natasha goes through, or instead to have it if it comes up as a question. In other words, it would be part, if someone asks a question about it, it would not be part of the, of the, um, the main presentation because it could, be, it could be seen as being used to create a fear and to drive, use that fear to drive the context for what we're trying to do to save us from this warehouse. Um, uh, and that, that's not really the, you know, that's not really the intent, but, um, uh, Marianne had felt strongly about that, and uh, and I had understood that uh, and agreed with it. The only thing that I can say, just to, I mean, I, I I'm not disagreeing. I'm just giving you just another perspective. Is that if you don't show them, 
one of the things that they were like, oh, we don't want to change everything, right? People are afraid of change. And so one of the things that we want to say is, this is what your gateway to Needham can, can look like with the current zoning. Um, it can be smaller buildings if they're commercial buildings or other things, but this is what you could get. We're not trying to scare you. We're just trying to tell you that if you don't revise the zoning, even just the uses, um, this is a potential of what could occur and it could occur by right. I don't know. That's just the other way of thinking about it. So it could be, you're thinking, Marianne is thinking about it more as a, it could be a scaring tactic. Um, that's, the, that's the way it was seen at the last presentation. People yeah, exactly. Of trying, of trying to scare them about having a warehouse there. Okay. Well, that's so, what scares me. Yeah, Why not say it? Yeah, but I think, but I think it shows the scale of building that's that's allowable by right. I mean, that you, you know, this fear of a large building on that property. But that's, but that's not. I, I don't want to, I don't want the neighborhood to focus in on that, and they might. What I want them to focus in on is we have a vision for what this area could be, and, and it's not that. what our vision is. That's exactly what Marianne's point was. It shifts the focus of the conversation to this, oh my God, uh, warehouse maybe, as opposed to uh, focusing on what our proposal is. It's a distraction. So, I agree. so if we keep it in the back, then maybe we can just say, as of now, you, you could, at, by as of right, you could build a warehouse that is approximately, you know, half of the site. Yeah. the size of half of the site without we showing it to them and, to be honest with you, it, and then if they want to say well what would that look like then you can show it then, then, and to be honest with you i'm looking at this picture i don't find this very scary because it's set back um Paul, you know, i you agree with you Highland avenue you don't see it from gold street that that's exactly what i was thinking I, I... okay so we can, I mean, we can move this to the back of the presentation and have it as a place, you know, to supporting and. Um, yep. Okay. So the first thing that we did is the as of right zoning plan. So we looked at it again as one building and then as multiple buildings. And this is something that after the presentation, you know, one of the questions that we have for you is that something that based on proportion on site, is that something that you would want to put in the zoning or is that something that the special permit, you know, but, but as of right, you can build a five story building that's 70 feet high. And one of the changes that we made right now is that um, it's 200 feet, we're, we're recommending um, 200 feet from, uh, Gould. from Gould Street. And also uh, it depends on where you take it and we need to figure out where to take it because the site slopes but um, it's about the same, you know, the, the average is about the same 200 feet from Highland Avenue. When we started looking at the building and the views from this area, this building at 70 feet seemed really, really, really large. So right now the red, we're showing three colors. The red is a uh, corporate uh, office space. The blue is R&D and the green, which you'll see in a second is uh, retail. And so for this particular one, the FAR of 1.0 um, would require 600, if you, if you were to max it, 685 parking spaces for this site, for the um, Channel 5 site, and uh, a building that is 205,000 square feet and a building of 454,000 square feet with 1,500 parking spaces. So- Natasha, uh, uh, yes. Natasha. Uh, there's an issue with this one and with uh, with many of the subsequent uh, slides as well. The green, uh, which is indicated as retail, is also used for um, uh, to show the the open space or the landscaping. So maybe we need a different hue. I think you do, and it, it comes up in every slide, um, okay. and and particularly in this side, you, yeah. you, it's exactly the same color green. Um, on the legend, and uh, it makes would make people think. Um, yes, you're talking about a string of retail all around the edge. Yes, I agree. We'll change the hue of that, so um, so that the retail is a different a hue than the than the landscape. Um, one of the things that we should also I'm just noticing Lee the the and Adam the the spreadsheet that you put together. We should also put that we need 20% open space. Okay. 
as important. I just noticed that that wasn't there. So the green, yes, you're right. Um, uh, the, we the, that to gray. the open space and it's also showing as the same hue as the retail. So we'll change one or the other, probably make the, the green for the open space the same color as this one over here. Um, but so what that shows, hold on, for some reason I'm not wanting to, what that shows is that you can get a large building with parking at the rear of the site with retail at the first level. And so the gray is, uh, for both buildings, is a parking garage. The gray for both buildings is a parking garage and probably we should put a P over it. Yes. And we had mentioned that and, and we didn't do that. So we need yep. to. Because it, it, looks, it looks as though that that's actually the retail section. Okay. So we want to make sure that that's clear that that's a parking garage. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and now you can see Jean's point with, you can see a little bit of, uh, of retail mm -hmm. uh, from this angle, uh, which is great. Right. So we'll give context to how small it is. Yeah, well, it's the entire, I think, so right now the, the corporate headquarters is 42%, the R&D over here is 42.5% also, and the retail is 15%. So it is fairly small compared to the rest of the program. And those, those percentages are based on the traffic study. And so what we did is we did views looking down Gould Street. So the building is way set back, but this is you know parking all in the front. And then this is Wingate and, and and then here is a view from Highland Avenue looking towards Newton, um, towards 128. And so the building is set back. So it looks, you know, like one of the buildings probably that you would see um, when you get off on uh, Route 9 in Wellesley, you know, one of the corporate buildings that has a parking lot in front. And is that one, two, three? How many stories is it? Five stories. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. One, two, so what we did is we, for these, for the as of rights, we just put, um, we, we did more intricate uh, uh, facade development for, um, for the special permit. But for this one, at least we're highlighting the floors. Okay. The first floor being the retail floor. And that's based on a 200, uh, 200 foot setback off of Gould and off of Highland to get to that accelerated height. Is that correct? Correct. So from... So the 200 feet, and we need to determine where we're, you know, because this is angled with where we want to show that. Um, it's about 200 and 200. And in, in front of that line, it's 42 feet. So it's a three-story building. And after that line, it's a five-story building, which is um, 70 feet high. So just so everybody understands, um, we are so we actually are increasing the depth of the setback along Highland Avenue and the interchange for for the for, for the point at which you can move from the 42 feet to 70 feet from what was in the original base proposal presented back in 2019. Right. So it used to be the line used to be in this area here, thinking that at the edge of the residential we would stop it. What happens is you get a 70 foot tower right here at the corner. Which is a significant point that we want to make because it shows a concession as a result of town meeting and the previous community meeting a year ago. Folks, it's five after nine. I think we need to move a little faster. Okay. So this is this is what it would look like in the current with the current setbacks. Um, and so then this is the option one B multiple buildings. And this is showing, you know, again, 42, 42, and 15 percent for. The 42 and 42 is R and D and um, and office space, and then the retail is 15 percent at about 100,000 square feet. So um, about 280,000 of each of the other two. And one of the things that we have maintained is based on the traffic study, the entrance here and an entrance into TV place. And so that is the proportion of building, um, you know, on the site, and we will. Jean, we will remove this. Um, yes. I think you're completely right. I, I don't know why I, I never saw it until right now. <laughs> and the, the green retail space on these sketches looks a little odd. It's, it's supposed to indicate the first floor of Correct. the building would be retail. Correct. So it, it almost looks to me like it's the, 
the ground around it. it, I, it I, I think what we might do is keep the green for the landscape and change this green to a color that is, doesn't look like it's the, the landscape. Yes. So yeah. Maybe it's oh, well, maybe you know, yellow. We're using yellow as housing. We'll maybe oh, we'll yeah, purple yeah. or something. I think we need yeah. a color that differentiates itself from the two that are there because we did want to show this pulled back so you could see the full context. But we have to make sure that that's really, um, you know, bright and, and 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 you can tell it's not landscape. You're completely right. Yeah. This is a really good slide, which you just showed us, because that shows that really shows the difference between the 42 feet and the 70 feet. Yes. And so this is a view of what that three stories <clears throat> feels like across the street from Wingate and across. So. It's, it's fairly, pretty much fairly a very similar proportion. Um, I want to su suggest that it needs more articulation of, of windows and that sort of thing. Uh, well, we weren't, we weren't doing that um, for the as of right options. We'll show you oh, the other okay, ones really okay. quickly. Oh, right, that's right. Doing it for this one, Natasha said for that the before. special Sorry. permit. Yeah, got it. And so this is what it would look like, the 42, as you're approaching need them and then this is the higher the five the 70 foot uh space here on the, the building on the right and then this is looking at it um with the multiple buildings on highland avenue towards newton and then this we can go back to these i just want to make sure that ted sees the entire presentation um and so then this is looking at now we have 30 percent corporate headquarters 30 percent r d 10.5% retail and, and almost 30% residential. And we, we kept the residential on the street side, knowing that there is a precedent for the residential being on the street side across from it. It's all uh, 42 feet high. And then there's the uh, co corporate headquarters. The retail is underneath the, um, the yellow. And then the R&D is here and the red is here. Again, we're looking at it as one full site. Uh, but again, it's in total 659,000, almost 660,000 square feet. Again, the, the gray is parking, we'll add P on top of it. And so that's what this would look like. And again, Jean, we'll change this color here at the bottom so that it doesn't look like landscape. Um, so one of the uh, important things to note is that, uh, again, again, the yellow is the housing and we're putting it against the residential neighborhoods and all of the, uh, corporate and R&D is kind of pushed back into the site. Just a quick, just a quick question. Is, uh, is 200,000 square feet of space roughly equivalent to give or take 240 units? Yes. So yes. Proportion okay. That's proportionally. So we, could, we could also say that. Yes. Yes, yes. that was based off of the spe a specific proposal in mixed use 128. Great, thank you. And so that, um, this is the option to mixed use also very, you know, I think we just went through this very similar. And then, um, then we go to the special permit where now you can have an FAR of 1.35 with a total square footage for the site of 866,000 square feet. And so um, we, we were separating it into again into 42, 40, 42.5, 42.5 for R&D and, and corporate and for retail 15%. And so that's what this would look like on the site. And then this is what it would look like. It's set back here on Gould Street. This is what it would look like as we are approaching Needham from Newton. And then this is what it would look like um, as you are coming down Highland Avenue towards the highway. And then we looked at option 1B, which is again, dividing it up into multiple buildings with um, again, the 866,000 square feet. And so that's what this would look like. And so this, we added more articulation to it, Jean here, mm -hmm. um, yes. showing this is what, you know, this is housing versus the, the corporate and the R&D with retail at the lower level. And uh, this is also what it would look like coming across the bridge into Needham and from Highland Avenue towards Newton. 
And then again, option two, mixed use. This includes the housing, again, for the 866,000 square feet. So it's bigger than um, the other one. And so this one um, is going, looking down Gould Street. This is still the, uh, the, the office R&D space. So this is the housing. And so we just added some windows for articulation that were smaller than the other windows, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of give just <laughs> scale. But we're not, we're not trying to design a building. We're just trying to give scale. And that's it. Th Looks that's good. Natasha, thank you. Looks good. And I particularly want to give Ted um, uh, an opportunity if he ha hasn't um, said his any concerns he has or questions that he's able to do that before he has to leave. So, so thank you very much. I, I have to agree with Paul. I think uh, this is excellent work. Um, I think that we're 85% of the way there. I think that um, you know, we've, we've had a variety of comments in terms of, you know, things, slides we need to add regarding the 42 foot height, uh, the renderings from the ramp, uh, move the warehouse slide to the end, um, and um, mark the parking with a P, you know, details like that. Um, but I would actually like to suggest uh, the following, that we go into the February 3rd meeting um, with, with the final version, that the purpose to me of, if there's any valid purpose to the February 3rd meeting, and as you know, I question the wisdom of it, um, I believe that the, the purpose of the meeting is for us to present at length our vision and what we think it should look like. Um, it should not be... Uh, cut short because, you know, at town meeting, you only have 15 minutes. Um, you know, I would spend a full hour going through this. And um, I don't think um, that we will get any new feedback in that meeting. Um, you know, we will get the, the comments that we expect. Uh, why are you rushing this? Why don't you make it a soccer field? Things like that. Um, so I'm going to suggest something really outrageous. I'm going to suggest that we meet again next Thursday morning and review the next, uh, next version of this, because I think we need to devote a tremendous amount of time between now and February 3rd to absolutely nailing this down tight so that once we get to February 3rd, um, we are in selling mode rather than in listening mode. Um, I think we've been in listening mode uh, in the past, and I don't think that we're going to get any comments that we don't know. I think this looks really good. Um, you know, I have my own personal quirks, as you know. Um, I, I would not uh, uh, use this gateway site for housing. But, you know, that's my own personal point of view. Um, I, I don't entirely subscribe to the theory of let the market decide. Uh, you know, our job as the planning board is to do the zoning. Um, but I'm content to allow some flexibility for the, don't, for the developer um, and deal with it in the special permit. But I really think that we should do the revision of this in the next week and that we should get together again next Thursday morning and go through it again until we have taken care of all the little uh, nits and gnats that we identified today. But I, I think this looks really, really good. So before we get into any other uh, comments by others, um, uh, what, what is the response to meeting next Thursday morning? Um, I certainly think it's a good idea. I'm in. I'm with me. It sounds like we're, well, is, uh, and Paul, did you say you're able to? Uh, yes. Join yes us then too? Yep. Okay. okay. Um, good. It sounds like we will schedule that. Yep. Is that I'm is available that... until 10. I don't know what time the meeting typically is, or is it in the evening? Oh, in the morning. Well, we're yeah, about, I'm like, available from 8 we'll to 10. We'll do it at 8.30 again. 8.30 to 10. Yep. yep. Yeah. That's good. Okay. I, I'm just there. I'm just verifying that I that I can make that time. I'll be back to you in a couple of minutes on that. If we could continue, I'm sorry. Okay. I have to check up an appointment. 
I just want to add a comment to something that Ted said. Ted said that it's our job to do zoning. It's also our job as a planning board to create vision for what, for what the planning board um, wants, wants the town to look like and to have. And so it, it's, it's not just creating zoning, it's, 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 creating, it's creating zoning with a vision. For, yeah, I, for, I agree with you, Paul. And yeah, and this is a beautiful vision, <laughs> personally. I, I, I agree with I you. Also I, want to I, remind I think those about, things go together. Yep. I also want to remind people that for the community meeting, we had planned to have GPI do a short presentation on the traffic piece. Um, so maybe it makes sense then for Adam and I to try to work with them um, to, set, to have them be part of the, of the meeting um, next Thursday to, so we can see their component as well. What a, Does that make sense? Uh, yep. What um, I Lee, what about fiscal impact? Would that be part of it too? I'm not gonna, we were gonna do a formal presentation on that. Um, Adam, I think was just gonna reference back to the study that was done that Judy Barrett did yeah, exactly. um, because she studied she studied the FAR at the one at a 1.3. What I don't have is basically a fiscal impact study that looks at the at the housing piece, and I am not going to have that uh, for February the third. I'll have that for the zoning hearing, but I will not have this, that analysis updated to incorporate housing. So I would. Uh, what I'd like to do now, if if I, if I may, uh, Madam Chair, is yes, uh, chat a little bit about uh, about the agenda and the timing of uh, some, th uh, some things, just so people have a greater context. The meeting itself is, uh, is scheduled to be about 90 minutes long. Um, and in that 90 minutes, I think, Ted, um, 60 minutes would be devoted to content and 30 minutes would be devoted to questions. And it's not that we would necessarily answer a question in the moment, it's just to let people speak and to hear their comments and questions. Um, and that within that 60 minutes, we would, we would hit the, uh, 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 we don't want to distract about too much of what we did before and too much of what the current existing condition is. We want to make a couple of brief highlights and then jump into, you know, the great work that Natasha's team uh, has done, talk about the spine in the corridor, um, at, uh, the commercial corridor, uh, at, you know, as a hub, uh, local and, and regional hub, and um, uh, and then also talk about uh, the zoning changes, uh, dimensional changes, um, and then also into the traffic, uh, and then into the fiscal uh, impact. And the fiscal impact uh, will be a minor part. It would be three minutes at most just to touch on what we already know from the prior report that Judy did and to, and to say that we're, you know, we're awaiting uh, 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 more information to complete the fiscal impact, including residential. And then, uh, and then the summary of this, the conclusion is to reference our goals and our, our vision, what we're trying to articulate here and how we see uh, you know, this is an improvement for the town and why it's important for us. I think that sounds great. Can I ask Lee one question about the fiscal impact? Is it sure. fair to say that including the residential would result in a fiscal impact that is less beneficial to the town than 100% commercial? Yes. Because of the school children? Well, because yes, because, because of the school children. The, yes, the retail will bring down the value. I mean, excuse me, the residential will bring down the value. Yeah, so I, I don't think we need to have the specific details of all the options. Um, you know, you, you can make the general comment that we'll do the calculation for you before town meeting, um, but you can anticipate that the fiscal impact with the residential component will not be as beneficial uh, because of these other reasons. Right. That, um, unless it was 55 and older. Yeah, the, it, if, if I could uh, say something about that. Um, I think it, uh, you'd expect that a building like this would be one and two bedroom units. And uh, as I recall from the, we, I think we did a fiscal impact on the- um, um, Mixed use. The, no, the um, Hackney Grandma site. And um, 
um, the, what we found uh, was that um, it's generally the affordable units and their own, it's, you know, this isn't a 40B, so it's just a small number of affordable units, but there would be some, um, I assume, uh, 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 that we would have an affordability requirement uh, as we do in many of our other districts. And uh, it's, it's usually the affordable units, uh, the two bedroom units um, that uh, generate children and the ones that are not affordable generally do not generate children. Um, and I expect that the fiscal study will, will be along those lines and the impact on the schools will not be uh, a terrible impact. So I just have a quick question on that. Is it because um, the affordable housing gives equitable housing to all different uh, generations of people that are coming in, right? And that's why they usually have children. And then when, when, when it's not the affordable housing or the 40B housing, whatever, is it that you, you find people that are um, later on in their lives purchasing these units or early on? Is that well, why? Well, you're, you're talking about purchasing. This isn't necessarily condominium. Um, no, I'm, no, I'm suggesting that people who uh, are willing to pay you know, rent and usually in new buildings like this, the rent is pretty high to live yeah. in a one or two bedroom unit. If they, if that family is a family with children of, of a, an upper middle income, they would prefer a house. Um, and, but uh, lower income families who can't afford a house are glad to have a two bedroom apartment. And that's, that's what we found. I believe I'm remembering correctly Yes, um, no, this is interesting. I'm just interested in hearing about this. And what about middle class families? Would they be attracted to this? Well, if you know, middle class families who can't afford a house in need and would probably just assume move, move two towns out as as create their life with their children in a two bedroom apartment. Natasha, I can share with you the fiscal impact study that was done by Yeah, that would be interesting on the Hartney Graymont site and also the work that was done when we did the mixed use overlay because there was a fiscal impact study that was done uh, for those housing units. And you can see the, the assumptions that were made in both those reports and the conclusion. Okay, yeah. thank you. No, and, I'm just uh, interested in it. It's super interesting to understand. Right, and I don't want to go into great detail no, no, on this, no. but just to say that the even the select board, which at first was, oh, impact on schools, impact on schools, backed off that when they realized when they actually saw the study. It, it also impacts what we do with, with the PPBC. That's why I'm asking just in general mm -hmm. to keep that in mind for the schools. I'd like yes. to, can I ask uh, Natasha two questions? One is kind of right to the point. The other one is more open-ended. First one is we talked a little bit last time about lab space, R and D space, which I, I understand to be greatly in demand right now versus office space, which people are not too sure about. And uh, Lee, Lee believes that uh, the parking and traffic impacts of both of those are similar. And so that um, showing what we've shown, we probably don't have to distinguish further. Do you, do you generally agree with that? I agree. Um, we're doing a project in the Marine Industrial Park Seaport area in Boston. and. It, it requires a significant amount of parking. The issue, the difference is that they have the silver line right next to it and they have public transportation where you, there's no public transportation to the site. So that's why we brought up the analysis of reviewing the bus line that could ameliorate the parking requirement for office and R&D. Okay, and the Mar other- Marty, yeah. I would say that the traffic study does show differences in terms of the uh, lab space and, and the corporate office space. Uh, corporate office space is going to have a greater impact during the peak hours. Office um, lab space does not have as great an impact during the peak hours, and, and the traffic is more spread out across the day. So they But do it's traffic versus parking. Yes, tra that's traffic. Parking would be the office. same. It's just R&D works different hours than retail. I mean, the, than office. Office could be, you know, 8 to 5, 9 to 5, where R&D, we find, you know, depends on shifts and depends on different things. Okay. All right. The other question is more open-ended, which is having worked on this in far greater detail than I think most of us have, Natasha, what would you like to see different about this? Is, do you see any flaws in our vision here? 
I, I think it's come a long way from the beginning where we had not visualized it and you had 70 feet right against this. You know, you had a five story building across from these houses and across from, I think the one thing that I do think is, is um, for me, um, creating an urban edge on the site versus having a parking lot with a building behind it to look like a, an industrial business park, you know, office park. To me, that's beneficial to our community. And so um, in creating, continuing this corridor that kind of gets eroded at, the, at, our, at our gateway. Um, so so um, I prefer the schemes that have the proportion of building be more in tune with what's happening on this side of the highway than what's happening on the other side of the highway. So when you do the one story, sorry, the, the one story, these bu the building can be fairly large and meet um, the, all the criteria. And, and the experience on the street and the experience as the gateway to Needham, to me is not as impactful as an urban plan as it is when you have something, you know, when the buildings are of a scale that's similar to what is there, just because this is such a unique site and create an edge um, into, into our community versus a void. So that, that's kind of, so if there is a way of having this corner here be um, encouraged, and I'm not really sure how, you know, I know there were a lot of talks with Deborah about not telling people what to do, but encouraging it and giving incentives or however, I don't really know how you've proposed that. I think it would, this corner here is very beneficial to the neighborhood, to the town, to the gateway, to contain keeping an urban edge that is of scale and um, appropriate um, for Highland Avenue. All right, thank you for that. I think we all need to think about that. Yes, because that really that really shapes how the zoning is written. I mean, if you want right. if you if you want to encourage what Natasha is talking about or mandate it, then it's a different zoning approach than what we currently have now. Um, so. Uh I, I have a suggestion, and we could get into more detail at a subsequent meeting, but um, uh, maybe there's some way of incentivizing um, housing along that edge and not allowing it in the back part uh, with the higher rise. Um, because assuming that there's a market for multifamily housing and that uh, developers would come forth, um, if it's incentivized to be along the edge, it's a possibility anyway. Uh, I hate to depart, but I have to sign out. Uh, we're starting uh, here at North Hill, three days of vaccinations, 300 a day for the next three wow. days. Good for you. So, Great. So Wait. We, we got a very, very busy, busy three days ahead of us. Well, we will so, miss you, so you will be the dearly departed. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Good luck. Well, you know, I don't know if people want to talk about Natasha's last thoughts there today or whether maybe we should postpone that till a week from today. But um, I think that's important to think about. I do, my, my initial reaction, um, anyway, I think it's a good idea that we all continue to contemplate it is, I, um, I like the idea of um, creating an urban edge because I think if I understand you correctly, Natasha, creatively what you're seeing when you look back um, when you zoom out from a wider view, you have this spine, this really this commercial spine, and then there's just this void, just this void of space. And then it, and then there is this, um, smaller, um, much smaller dots of commerce down the spine running down the center of town and down chestnut. So this does give a creative continuity for what you're talking about. And I, I think it's important to note that it's in scale, in, it's at scale in keeping with what's already there. Um, I, I agree with you that creatively it's creating that urban edge. I think that's beneficial. Uh, and I think that to accommodate that, I think um, we probably should include that uh, and that's how we would like it to be um, in the in the zoning and make it required. I I would say that the alternative is basically 
that the building is set a little further back and and you have more parking up front in that section. Is that right? Um, hold on. I was just trying to show you like the, you know. That's the, fine. The urban edge. The, to me, when I was doing this analysis with, with our group, the parts of the, of the spine that seemed to call attention to me more, that were more um, successful, were the parts that had the buildings that created the edge versus, you know, the other side of parking lots. So just to, um, I think, you know, even, even a, a garden creates an edge, a different type of edge, right? But to not, but even um, as I was going up and down Highland, Highland by um, between the, uh, the library, the, the houses made for a beautiful edge. And then all of a sudden you had some sporadic buildings Correct. with yeah. no, no continuous edge that felt like there were little mini office parks. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you have this beautiful house next to it and you have you know the temple and other places that also make an edge. So, sorry. So you were talking about um, the, 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 the ones that make an edge, but the... So I, was just, I, I like the idea of creating that urban edge. I think if that's our vision that we should really make it a mandate. In other words, what we're saying is we we don't want to see uh, we don't want to see a mass parking lot at that corner. Right. This is this is a very different feel. If you have a building that's five stories high with a big parking lot in front, it's a very different feel than creating a more an urban edge that is, you know, three stories high that relate to all of the buildings and to the neighborhoods that are around it. And this, this, you know, this is a corporate headquarters um, that doesn't, I wouldn't want to walk towards it. Let's put it that way. It feels right. more vehicular. The other comment that I, that I would raise to the group is that it's, uh, it's very uncommon in a mixed use development to have residential and office or residential and lab that the vast majority of proper mixed use from a residential context is residential and, uh, and uh, ancillary retail. So, you know, we should give that a little bit of, you know, thought, I think, uh, because I, it's important that you depict that, Natasha, that you show what that could potentially look like, but the, uh, the tenants or the owners of condos, should it be owner owned versus, uh, you know, rented, um, you know, they, they don't want to be 50 feet from a corporate office tower. It also changes dramatically, the, uh, I think, what would be considered as, as retail as amenities. The amenities of one may be different than the amenities of uh, lab space versus uh, retail amenities for you know, for uh, predominantly seniors, let's say, um, so I, uh, so we should just you know be aware that it's we're talking about residential and including it, but it's unlikely that it would be developed in a mixed use between residential lab space and office space. Does that make sense? I, I, I want to recognize Paul, but just one quick co comment, okay. Adam. We, yes. we are going to have a cap on the number of residential units. Um, so that might uh, mean that they wouldn't be fully developed. So my, Paul. You're right. So Adam just raised two points, and I want to comment on both points. The first one is on the urban edge, which I agree with the concept. I'm having a very difficult time envisioning how we incorporate that into a zoning bylaw. Basically how we mandate in a zoning bylaw, which may not even take effect for 10 or 15 or 20 years uh, as a, you know, when a developer actually comes in and develops this, um, how, 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 how we draft a zoning bylaw that requires that a building be along the edge. But maybe I leave that to Lee. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not. I'm thinking about it. And I'm not really quite sure how to do it. I would probably yeah. reach out to some people to figure out how to do it. Yeah, um, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know how to do it. My um, second comment is on the on the um, uh, uh, commercial portion being retail. If there's going to be residential rather than office, I think we're too much getting into the weeds. 
for where we are now on that. I don't know that the scale of the buildings will change. And all that we're doing right now is showing what the scale of the buildings will look like because that's what the zoning really goes to. And whether the, 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 um, uh, the, the 70 foot building in the back is going to be a, a, uh, uh, a department store or a group of small stores like Quincy Market or whether it's gonna be um, uh, office or R and D. I don't think it will change the scale of the building. Can I just comment on that? Just picking up on yes, exactly Marty. exactly what Paul is saying. I think the issues Adam raises are good issues, but they're issues for the developer, not for us. Okay. The other thing is going back to the urban edge concept. To the extent that we're scaring people, I would say use the word edge. Don't use the word urban. Yeah. That will scare people. Yes. They don't want to be in a city. That's why they're in Needham. Yep. A creative edge. A commercial. Whatever. Just don't yep. use the word urban. Okay. Okay. Paul, Paul, just thinking quickly about, you know, a strategy to kind of encourage the three building profile. I mean, one strategy would be to drop your um, as of right FAR and then basically for a special permit, um, one of the criteria would be, you know, that you could access that with, you know, with buildings that were of a scale that was comparable to what was happening around it, where the goal was to create an urban edge. Um, an edge. So the, the, edge. FAR, the FAR would be, would be <laughs> the like FAR as of right would be low for a singular building, but that if you want to grab the higher FAR, then you had to have the multiple buildings, you had to respect the corner, you had to have the urban edge. Those would be the criteria for the special permit. Okay. I'll say edge, Marty. I'll say edge. That's another, um, that would be another way of maybe. I'll cough when she says er. <laughs> um, <laughs> just want to respond with, to what Louise said because um, when you present the dimensional um, differences, um, it, 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 it seemed to make sense when we had um, a higher FAR of 1.7 that you know, as of right was one and um, special permit was 1.7. When you have, you're just going up from one to 1.35, it doesn't seem like that much of a change. Uh, and that's, uh, so I'm responding to what Lee said and thinking, I wonder if our as of right FAR should actually be a little lower. Yeah. So we'll have to think about that maybe, but it's hard to think about that and give direction between now and next week, unless we do it immediately. Because I think what we want to do in order to, to accomplish the vision that we want to accomplish is to make it more difficult for somebody to build something as of right. We want, right. Them, we want them in front of us on a special permit application so that we can start putting our vision into what they, they present to us and saying, well, you know, why don't you do this and why don't you do that, you know, during the special permit process. But if they can do the whole project as of right, they don't have to come to us that you know we lose we lose control of, right of right. Uh, what goes there is that and that includes our impact on mitigation too for traffic and other things is that right no the traffic mitigation is really covered under a site plan approval thank you very Which, much for the clarification. It, it will be triggered. yeah and our ability to um uh make uh requirements uh, as, as we discussed from that case that uh, uh, we talked about on, on, um, uh, on the two projects that came to us and said, we want our use to be as of right instead of special permit. And we said, no, our, our ability to make those changes is greatly diminished on a site plan uh, mm -hmm. permit than it is on a, um, on a building special permit. So I'd be... Permit. I'd be, I'd be curious to know, we're talking, I think right now at 1.35 of 800 and something square feet of development. Is that right, Lee? 866 versus- uh, 600 something. 600, yeah, hold on. At one? Versus so- Versus 659. So basically 200,000 square feet from one to the other. So if, just to give people a sense of context, that's the equivalent of like a um, 
uh, that's the equivalent of a you know of a Costco uh, or uh, or a Walmart in terms of size, um, and uh, um, so I would you know to your point. Uh, which is a very good one that we reduce the FAR, Paul. I'd wonder what the reduction would be if we were at one, if we were at zero point eight five. Yeah, that would be closer, probably to maybe four hundred and fifty thousand square feet versus yeah. eight hundred. Basically, half of the one point three five is what you're saying. Pretty close, not quite, but pretty close. Right, but right or. Yeah, not, yep. that would be point one point six. Sorry. I mean, I guess I'm looking for the threshold under which people make the decision not to use the the as of right. That's what you really what you want. You want you want it to be so low that somebody's going to jump into the special permit process. Right. In order to, in order to ac access the added value. But presumably, you want there to be a significant difference between the current zoning and the future zoning too. So, I, you know, that the point eight five is is significantly up from 0.5, so it probably does that. We might want to go 0 0.8 or 0 0.75. 0 0.75 might be too low. Yeah, 0 0.8. I think, I think, I think between 0 0.8 and 0 0.85 is bingo. The current, the current scenario by special permit as it, by special permit under existing zoning is 0 0.75. Right. By special permit, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So point point eight is that what we're we're headed with this? It's going to require Natasha to make some changes in some of these drawings. Right? It will, yeah. It's a lot of changes because we have to we have to basically recalculate everything and recalculate all the parking. We can do it. I'm just saying it's it's not um it's a big it's a big change visually. You know, not not for the renderings possibly as much if we can help that, but we we can talk to Lee about it. Then let me make this suggestion because I you know. We are, and you are, Natasha, very time constrained. Let's leave it where it is at one, but, but say at the meeting that the planning board is considering reducing the one as of right to a lower, to a lower figure in order to encourage um, having, having the edge. Maybe we could put it into that Excel spreadsheet where you could say consideration you know, yeah. 0.85. I, I, I do want to think about that for a minute because I worry that what may happen is uh, the community might say, well, let's just do this. It's a smaller project for the residential. Uh, so the impact on the residents will be smaller. Let's just do it as of right for, uh, uh, you know, whatever that lower uh, density is or that the special permit be that lower density. I just want to think that through a little bit. Having a low density for the, for the special permit totally, in my mind, totally takes away our vision. Yes, I know. That's exactly what I'm worried about happening. So I want to, so I, I, I completely agree with what you're saying, Paul, and uh, that, we, that we want to encourage um, uh, the special permit and the way to do that as we're talking is to reduce um, uh, the, the density by right. I just want to be careful how we present that because uh, it's a marketing question for the, you know, for the uh, right you know, for residents. That's all. Yeah. Well, I, I think the marketing is, is the value that you get with the urban edge and, and, this, and, the, and how that reinforces the spine and how it's really consistent with what's happening all around it because the buildings and, are more proportional. And also, you're absolutely right. And it's equally important what Paul was just mentioning about, uh, about how uh, we can exact more control over the process and... Uh, and give a greater vision if it's before if it's before us if it's by right we'll have very little control uh, and we have to explain what uh, what's important why that's important why that control is important and beneficial to the town excuse me Marty thanks for asking Natasha that question what do you think <laughs> that really opened up 
this conversation in a in a in a really interesting way. Um, I want to. I was just looking to see um, if there were any attendees, and I uh, just want to point out. And I'm glad to see them. That Katie Katie King and Mary McCooley of the Suck Board are um, tuned in. Okay. Do we still have Natasha? Are we missing anything else? Um, no, one thing that, that Lee asked me to do when I sent her was, uh, and I'm not sure if this is related to this particular piece, but just wanted to, to make sure that you had seen it and if is the uh, sustainable uh, zoning. Um, I have, no, I have not shared that. I will share that with them. Yeah, we just, we just sent some examples of what's going on in other towns uh, by the Rocky Mountain Institute gave information about different towns in Massachusetts and what they're doing for that. And Somerville um, right now is, is the leader. Somerville and Cambridge are the leaders and in Boston of it. But there are all other towns, including Concord and others that have adopted some sustainable strategies to their zoning. So just wanted to make sure that you knew that we had done some research on that. Um, to I'll, that yes, I know that for the governor right now, the climate change bill um, includes a provision to have uh, cities and towns be able the two, it's, you know, the reporting has been to opt in. I assume what they mean is um, um, the, the, the new law would, would bless the idea of um, bylaws and ordinances in this direction. And do you have a feel because, you know, through the BSA and um, NIOP has their own ideas and ACEC has their own ideas that I, I heard that the governor was not, um, was probably not going to sign the bill. Do you, do you have any uh, Dates on that, Gene? No, I haven't. I have no updates, but they, I, I, I agree. NIOP is opposed to that provision of the bill. We know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and even the I've been working on it for, for months, um, looking at it from different angles. And, and we saw the, um, what NIOP uh, wrote, uh, what John Chester wrote on the Globe about it. So I can share that information with some of you just, um, and, and we were, we did an opinion piece as a rebuttal. So. Uh -huh. while, while we have uh, uh, some of the, uh, the attendees uh, uh, from town, um, I wonder if we could ask them if they have any questions, if they want to raise or, uh, or if they have any comments. Clay, could you help facilitate that for us? Uh, certainly, if um, anybody from the audience would like to raise their hand, I guess, is the best way to go about that. So Marianne or, or Katie, if you- Marianne right. raised her hand. Mm -hmm. All right, Marianne, you can um, unmute yourself. Am I okay, on? I don't know Marianne. how this works. Yes. yes. Um, okay, I, I guess I just would have said that um, I'm, I'm thinking about the notion of lowering the buy right FAR. My initial gut reaction would be not to make any change. I think people who are interested in this parcel will be interested in maximizing the value from it. So, um, so I think it creates a lot of work that's artificial. That's my view. Thank you, Marianne. I know you've been quite involved in this process. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, I had some um, comments as I reviewed this yesterday. I um, just want to make sure um, if we have time, um, I'll mention them. Um, on, the, on the satellite view, um, most of the town was green and, and the area around this site was gray. Um, and yet I would think that the satellite view would also show that uh, this area as, as somewhat green with trees and so forth. So I didn't know why, I mean, people would say, would, would focus on that maybe and say, why is it being shown that way? Not, um, it's not this view you're talking about. This is right the one the that's very, on the At the very beginning, yeah. Existing, existing town. Yeah. Map of and, existing town. Right. And, uh, this one? No. No, further back. Okay, ways. I think it's the first slide that's shown. Uh, 
like that big. Because the, the aerial view that's available that we were able to get was probably taken in the winter. And maybe this is Google Earth, the GIS plan and that what we can yeah, bring into it. One after that, right after that. Yeah, right after this one. Uh, yeah, that one. Yeah, why does it, it's odd that it shows it. You think there really is a, no greenery in that whole area? No, no, no. It was the, the and maybe we, we, we shouldn't show it this way. We should just show a band around where Needham is. The, the idea for this is to highlight, and maybe it should be a different color and not green, but to highlight where Needham is within the larger context. Oh, yeah. Um, so maybe I we thought, should just I do thought a, that it was intended to show kind of the area that's developed uh, with parking lots and so forth and not much no green. this is yeah no this um all right well it just might create an issue and, I don't and know. actually this isn't this is showing the area of the site the where the site is located because it doesn't show full needham needham continues to go back here so yep. either we can eliminate this slide or we can just uh put a line around where needham is you know um no i don't know the fact that we're showing part of newton is the problem i just didn't understand why the circle all around the red dot, you know, is not as green as the rest of the area. I don't think you need this slide. Yeah, let's just take out the satellite view because it's becoming confusing. This is, was yeah. more for us to do an analysis internally. And then so we just shared yeah. this analysis with you. Okay. And then I don't think we need the historic sites slide. Um, it's mm -hmm. obvious there are no historic sites. Nobody would even think there were any historic sites around here. Okay. Um, it just adds something that we don't really need. Okay. And uh, on the one just before that, the amenities, um, not that people will focus detail on it um, the way I did, but um, it's it's so out of date. I mean, it's got the Hillside School in its old location. It, it, it mentions some amenities that are so obscure. It's like, why do we mention that? This um, was, was in the GIS map that we pulled out. And so... Um, so we can also eliminate this if you feel like the, the the whole point of this is to show that there's density and there's a corridor. So anything that yeah. detracts from that probably is not worth knowing. I like the concept, but I, I that's okay. We can remove that. I mean, and it's I like, I like the fact that it shows the ones that have the dots and the stars that are important to us. Um, I don't know if there's some. Maybe oh, nobody think, cares I'm, that it shows. I, I think actually, I would eliminate this. We just did this for ourselves, for the team yeah, okay. internally, and we just shared them with you and thought that they were kind of interesting. But I think I think the most important parts is the density. Yeah. The, um, the transportation. Oh, transportation, absolutely. Yeah. And the Highland Avenue Civic and Commercial Corridor mm -hmm. that, that we put together. Do you? Does everyone agree? I, I yes. kind of like the one with the amenities, and you could mention that it's out of date, but I understand the reasoning. Uh, to to not use it that's that's fine i don't i, I don't mind okay. i think that the transportation one is so critical and the spine uh okay. you know the spine that you talk about natasha is also really critical and you could mention uh yes, you know the amenity some of the you could point out verbally some of the amenities along the uh as you're talking about the spine yeah, the ones yes. that are important um, and just ignore the other ones. Right. So when we talk about here, but but the, some of them, you know, some of the amenities are here because this is the spine. Yep. Well, that's right. true. That's, that's, that's a good slide. Good. Yeah, that's that's the critical one that I was referring yeah, to. Yeah, that's really good. Maybe we just need that one. Um, and there's a slide that shows the um, acreage of each of the parcels. I think we should have a total. Because I, I always keep thinking to myself, what's the total acreage we're talking about here? Um, I think we should present that total acreage. So we could we could show the we could also show um, yeah see the, the yeah. plan that Lee that you sent me yesterday that shows where the properties are. Oh, the assessor's map. The assessor's map. Would that be helpful? Yeah. Yeah. Because I think that's kind of something that stays in people's minds, you know, like this. Yes, it's about a 12 or 13 acre parcel, I guess, but you know, just to have that figure out there. Um, yes. Um, yeah, and we talked about how we need a new use, a use chart. Um, yes. Um, oh, in the view from Gould Street, all the views from Gould Street, we should make it clear that it's toward Highland. Um, you vote from Gould okay. toward mm -hmm. Highland. Uh, it wasn't obvious to me when I first looked at it. You want it to be really obvious what you're looking at. 
Um, um, sidewalk doesn't exist, does it? The sidewalk, uh, no, but we just we just added it so you could see the opportunities for coming into it. So um, hold on, let me show you what it looks like right now. We can delete it. Um, yeah, I kind of think if there's no sidewalk. Well, there is a sidewalk, but it's but it's a um, asphalt. It's asphalt. We can make it asphalt. We just it's only on one it. side of the street. Yeah. So yeah. What? Maybe we should. well, of course, on our side of the street, we do have opportunities make change so we can so we we could either eliminate it or we can make it asphalt i i think it's fine i think it's fine it's just a re it's just a representation of all of this is just a somewhat of a facsimile of what's currently there well if it's easy but, to make it asphalt so people don't get confused and why not no but this is a vision well this is well, I think we want to look to talk about how how it could it could look too. So there could be an upgrade across the street. Yeah. Um, yeah. We talked about the black box and we're gonna get rid of that. Yes. Um, um, and we're gonna add the P to the parking. We're gonna change the colors of the the green. The green seems to be in conflict with greenery yeah. and retail. So we'll change that color, the retail color. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Those are my comments. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So, uh, are there is there any further guidance, Natasha and Susan, that you think you need going forward between now and next week? No, I, I think we just forward. by next Thursday we just want to make some of these. We need to make these changes to make sure that 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 it feels like like a cohesive presentation. And it's, you know, we're not missing anything, but I, I don't have any other suggestions. I think, I think emphasizing that having that the continue the continuation of the spine and the edge, I think um, for me is important as, as a resident and, and in planning this, you know, um, so I don't know how that, that, you know, how you want to convey that, but I think, I think that's, uh, yeah an important piece of this exercise. I know that there's the, the, the issue of what's zoning and what, you know, what do you allow developers to do to, to create opportunities for this site? So, and I don't know how, you know, you want to go about it, but I think stating that creating an edge in, in a mostly residential neighborhood that happens to be inter intersecting the highway and the main artery into the town, um, it, it doesn't occur anywhere else in town and there aren't too many precedents for this but that we should really think about how we want the vision of our town to be and how we want the entrance of our town to be folks it's 10 o'clock yep okay. um so uh, i'll work with natasha and we'll plan on meeting i guess next week thursday at 8 30. um i don't think you, you should plan on seeing um a draft presentation probably any any earlier than wednesday um um a, by by email so we'll okay. put the agenda together but you, you won't be getting a, a revised proposal until quite close to the meeting okay okay this the agenda has minutes but uh, i haven't reviewed the minutes we're, we're we're putting that up till the 19th the meeting of the 19th um was there anything else you want to share with us at this meeting lee with regard to correspondence or anything not with, with regard to correspondence, but I also want to throw out another idea because we talked about, you know, dropping the as of right FAR. I mean, the as of right height could also be dropped. I mean, if you look at, for example, in the center business district, um, the height as of right is two and a half stories. It's the increased height is accessed by special permit too. So there's two, I think there's two um, bars that could be looked at um, to create your base FAR, your base condition, an FAR and a height in a, in a lower height and you access the higher height and you access the higher FAR, um, which allows you to implement the vision. I, I just wanna bring something cause that's really important. Just the thought, sorry to, to interject here, but I, I would recommend rather than changing the FAR is changing the height because what happens is that if you change the FAR, the density of the site becomes a tiny little building within a large sea of parking. Um, Versus if you change the height, you still keep somewhat of the density, which is appropriate for the site, but uh, it would discourage, it would discourage um, 
development because it would create a larger floor plate all around versus going for special permit and making it, you know, um, having more FAR. I just feel like if you change it to 0.85, I mean, right now the, you know, half of the 0.5 would be half of the site, right? Um, and, and you have multiple levels. So the development, as you shrink the FAR, the development and keep the same height, the development just kind of gets smaller. I don't know, Susan, do you have any, any? No, I agree. I think looking at the height is another strategy that's, that's worth pursuing because you can maintain the density in the way you described. Yeah. And in fact, I, notes I had on comments, I was surprised to see that the as of right height and the special permit height was the same because usually in our business zones, that's the main thing we're changing with the with the right. What would you change the height by? Eight or 10 feet? Something like that? Yeah, like just story. make it a story less. So all of a sudden you, you know, it's more like what, what's happening in the center in, of town. And um, and it would encourage them to get a special permit. Yeah, well in the, in the center of town it's um it's it's two and a half stories. No, I know, but I'm just saying it, it's shorter than what we're showing. It's a, a story less. So if you still have, but but it, I'm just concerned that if you go below one, your density is going to get so small that someone, you know, could build a building in a, in a, in a, in a, in a you know, a parking lot, basically. I know we're short on time, but if Marianne's still on, and I think she is, can we ask her to comment on whether she thinks that's an empty exercise too? We can hear I you would, I would very much be in favor of if you want to consider something looking at height rather than FAR. All right, Makes thank really you. more sense to me. Thank you. Good. So reducing the the as of right height, at least for the large building in the back. So what what is story. the max height in by right 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 now? I'm not certain that I know for yeah. sure. Is it 70. five stories or is it four? It, it's uh, the front the front four is 42, which is three stories. The back is 70, which is five. So if you even say that the front could be is two stories, let's just say, um, we can see where that gets you in FA. You know, we remove that one level and we'll tell you where we are with FAR, I guess. Well, I think the back should also come down. Would be my so four. Yeah, so maybe it's two and four versus yeah. three and five. Yeah. It's two and a half and thirty feet is uh, is very well. Big. You get the you get the half because you still can do a roof on it, right? Oh, yeah, you know, and uh, it's very typical in our business zones. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Yep. The thing is, so Monday's a holiday, so I'm just trying to figure out. We're going to get as much as we can done for the next Thursday, um, in the sense of but but changing some of these things and some of these heights. I'm going to see what it impacts and see. Let's see how much we can get done. Um, it, it, you know, it, we'll get back to Lee. We'll get back to you and just kind of give you a big picture. Okay. Of of what seems appropriate for this, and then we can still continue. You know, right after the meeting. Because that meeting, the meeting on, is is only internal. Is that correct? I mean, it's it's the the same the same group right now. It's not the, it's not no, the full no, workshop that's, that's happening right. at the, the community meeting. Community meeting is not until February the third. So this is right. like an interim meeting. So we have time after that meeting to adjust this for to, to develop things further. I'd love okay. to, I'd love to invite Marianne, uh, you know, to the next, as well. Um, I see actually her hand is up. No, no, I'm, I was trying to check something and I may have messed that up. Uh, my hand was up, which was ridiculous, but I, I didn't mean that. Is, is Marianne's hand up? Because I was trying to find her and I couldn't on my screen. I do see her hand is still up. Marianne, did you? Well, Marianne can still talk. She's still, I still see She's her unmuted. picture. Yeah. Yes. Um, my question was, what is the by right height uh, over in Needham Crossing? Uh, just give me a sec. The as of right one, Marion? Yeah. Okay. And, and I don't know, I'm just trying to think about whether that's relevant or not. So that's. Sometimes we create different things all over the place and I'm not sure that there's always a reason to create a different site specific thing in each place. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it is a model for us or not. I just wanted to think about it. 
Marianne, if I might, I'm not, I don't think that Needham Crossing, which is on the other side of 128 and the other side of Highland Avenue is really relevant to this site. We have a vision for this site, which I don't see really as being um, comparable to what's on the other side of 128, which is, which is a different vision. I agree with that. Yeah, and also I think if we're gonna have a comparison, it would be to other business zones that go toward our downtown rather than the ones across the road. Um, uh, to one, one, nine. I don't know that I necessarily agree with that actually. I think that, you know, we're talking about the continuity of the spine that Natasha laid out at the beginning. And in that regard, I, I, I think that uh, the other almost fully developed as a result of new guy, uh, new regulation across the park, uh, across the highway at uh, Needham Crossing is relevant. I do see the point that it's blending in closer to a residential section and it's coming in a little bit closer to town. And yet I do, I, I do see it as part of a bigger context, the spine that Natasha was referring to. Yeah, but I think the spine is just along Highland Avenue. I don't think it includes what happens when you turn onto the side streets to get into Needham Crossing or get into the mixed use 128 area. Yeah, the Highland Commercial 128, which that's that's the frontage part of, of Highland on the other side is three stories, right? Um, and well, no, it's actually, yeah, it's 54 feet. Right, 54 feet and it says three stories. So that's that's four stories. That's that that's interesting confirmation if it's four stories. So <laughs> yeah, it's 54 feet. It is 54 feet. What was the three? Oh maybe it's maybe it doesn't have a story. Uh, yeah, just but just um, maybe I mean if they, they might want to it could be yeah, three tall stories. Yeah. That's a useful comparison. Folks, I have to leave. Yeah. Um, Will you take a motion to adjourn or shall I just log off? Um, are we ready to adjourn at this point? Motion to adjourn. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second. second? Second. Okay, any discussion on that motion? All set. All right, uh, call for vote, Martin Jacobs. Aye. Adam Block. Aye. Paul Alper. Aye. And Jean McKnight is aye and we are, we stand adjourned. Adam, a quick question. You're still available tomorrow for a meeting with GPI, all in your schedule? Uh, uh, tomorrow, yes. Yeah. Your entire day is free. Okay. So far. Okay. Okay. Uh, there is another Anymore. meeting that I'm trying to play around with, but yes. Okay, thank you. Thank, thank you, Natasha. We'll be in touch. Thank you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Great work, guys. Thank you.